in his, his secondary world, which he worked on all his life, he developed it to this extraordinary vastness, solidity, uh, and coherence, which is, I suppose, unique. And this secondary world, which is usually referred to as mistakenly, but entirely understandably, as Middle Earth, this comprehensive secondary world inevitably it's his world he, uh, he, he its content will be his content it will contain his griefs his hopes his experience his concept of beauty and ugliness his concept of good and evil it will not be an ideal world he wasn't interested in utopias far from it but it will to inevitably I think be an archaic world in some aspects its archaism shows itself at once in the relatively small space that the man-made takes in it in relation to the world we inhabit now and uh, for him the man-made was the great problem he once said to me you know it isn't the not man like the weather nor man even at a bad level it's the man-made that is so ultimately daunting and insupportable so his secondary world contains an extraordinarily small relatively speaking to our world of amount of the man-made and it's very well known it's often said he disliked the modern world of course this is absolutely true but what I would like to say is that it was absolutely inevitable that he should. It springs from exactly the same source as his desire for fantasy.